the gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, amen. <clears throat> when we think of someone who we see as having special goodness about them, we might describe them as being salt of the earth. We mean that without these people, life would lose some of its flavor. While we might get along without them, life just wouldn't be the same. Such people remind us of They're like sounding rods that keep us grounded in what's real in life. Life is richer because of their presence. We have heard today that we are, as Jesus says it during the Sermon on the Mount, the salt of the earth and light of the world. Jesus often used metaphorical language to help us, to help point us to a deeper truth, or one that we might call the contemplative dimension of the gospel. But why is he talking about salt and light today? And in what context? The people of the first century would have known about salt. It was common, for instance, for guests gathered for a meal to be seated in relation to the position of the salt cellar, or what we call today the salt shaker. The more honored guests were seated above the salt, which means that they were located closer to the host. Those seated below the salt were considered to be of less importance. And in Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper, Judas Iscariot is portrayed with an overturned salt cellar in front of him. It's an ominous visual of things to come. The Romans considered it a bad sign to spill salt and thought that they could avert disaster by taking a pinch of salt and tossing it over their left shoulder. In the days of the Roman Empire, salt was nearly as valuable as gold. Its uses varied from enhancing the flavor of food to being used as a preservative and even as a healing agent. A soldier was often paid, with, in part at least, by, with salt, which came to be known as salariu, from which the word salary is derived. A soldier's salary was cut if he was not worth his salt a phrase that came into use because the Greeks and Romans often purchased slaves with salt. Salt was often also used in Jewish purification rites, and it was the custom to rub salt on a newborn infant. From this came the Christian practice in some places to add salt to baptismal water, and today we add salt to holy water to purify it. When I was confirmed by Bishop Tom Shaw, a monk in the Society of St. John the Evangelist and the Bishop of Massachusetts, I and others confirmed that day were given a small vial of salt and a small candle as a reminder of Jesus' claim that we are salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt was meant to enhance, to heal, to preserve, and to purify. Salt was an extremely valuable commodity, considered to be of inestimable worth. So what did Jesus mean that we are salt of the earth and light of the world? 
How do we ourselves enhance, heal, preserve, and purify the world around us? And what does it mean to lose our flavor, to lose our saltiness? It helps to consider the context from which these words come today. And we don't have to look far. We heard it in the elections, the reading from Isaiah and the psalmist and the uh, letter to the church in Corinth. And then now Jesus speaks to us from the Sermon on the Mount and his claim that we are salt of the earth and light of the world immediately follows the Beatitudes and that's important because he outlines the characteristic qualities of one who is truly committed to the love of God and love of neighbor. So maybe it's as uncomplicated as that. To be salt of the earth means to we are to live the Beatitudes. We are to be humble, meek, and merciful. We are to strive for righteousness and purity of heart. And as the children of God, we are to be peacemakers in the world. That sure sounds like salt of the earth stuff to me. Although the qualities outlined in the Beatitudes may seem extraordinary and a bit beyond where we are in our lives today, they are not. These qualities are countercultural for sure, but they are not beyond our reach and they are not beyond the expectation that Jesus has for us. These salt of the earth qualities are profound spiritual concepts for ordinary living that help bring about the kingdom of heaven right now, right here on earth. It is the extraordinary living of the ordinary lives of God's holy salt of the earth people, people like you and me. Being salt of the earth people means that we live our lives within the knowledge of God's abundant blessing in all of our humanness. It means that we can shake away superficial phoniness and move toward becoming pure, whole, and authentic persons that stand for values and beliefs that we know are worth dying for or even better, worth living for. We live in a way that enhances those around us, inspiring all people to be the very best they can be, regardless of cultural, religious, or denominational stripes, regardless of where, who they are, where they've been, or what they've done. It means that we promote unity, not division, peace, not violence, and love, not hatred. We bring healing and purification into places that are wounded and hurting. And all the while, we lose ourselves as we point to the one true God of life. This is what it means to be salt of the earth. Jesus reminds us today that we are also the light of the world and that we must let that light shine. As the salt of the earth people of God, we are to move in ways that illumine darkness. We must bring the light of Christ into the shadowy corners of the world. So what does it look like and how exactly are we to do that if we read further into the Gospel of Matthew? We see it. Jesus states it clearly for us. We are to feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the sick, and visit those in prison. When we do these things for our brothers and sisters in the world, we are doing it for Jesus. It really couldn't be any clearer than that. It's not rocket science, it's salt of the earth. And we shouldn't waste time admiring our work or patting ourselves on the back because first of all, it's what we should be doing in the first place. And secondly, it's not about us, it's about God. Jesus said that we are the light he didn't say we should be in the limelight or in the spotlight. We simply love mercy 
do justice, and walk humbly with God. No big headlines, just real salt of the earth stuff. Otherwise, we risk losing our salt. Jesus was also pretty clear about another way we can lose it. It's when we refuse to feed the hungry and give water to the thirsty, when we refuse to welcome the stranger and clothe the naked, when we refuse to help the sick and visit those in prison, when we refuse to help our brothers and sisters in the world, no matter who they may be, we are refusing Jesus himself, and we have lost our salt. We live in a wonderful and magnificent world. Beauty is all around us. But we also live in a world that is filled with suffering. We live in a world that is constantly at war and in great need of peacemakers. We live in a world that is all too often driven by greed and consumerism and in great need of a true sense of healthy priorities. We live in a world that diminishes the dignity of too many of God's human family because if one single person's life is diminished, it is one too many. We live in a world of racism and bigotry that is in great need of the discovery of the true divine love of our God and of our neighbor. Because if we truly love God and our neighbor as ourselves, we wouldn't hurt ourselves, and we wouldn't hurt others the way we do. The great 13th century Beguine mystic Heswick said this, one must live holy for love, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. One must live holy, completely, for love. That sounds like salt of the earth pure and simple. The world needs mercy and justice and humility and love. The world needs to experience the freedom that comes from being meek and merciful. The world needs people who really and truly are committed to striving for righteousness. The world needs people who are salt of the earth and light of the world. The world needs people like you and me. So let's get moving. Let's bring our salty selves into the world because each and every one of us is of an estimable worth to humanity. But what if, as Jesus says, we feel like we've lost our saltiness, our divine flavor, what if we feel like we've lost our spiritual edge and question what we have to offer the world? And how do we get it back? Well, Jesus' question today was a rhetorical one. Each one of us must answer that for ourselves. But go out into the world anyway, knowing that God is at work through you and remembering that in giving, we will receive. And when you find yourself immersed in the humanity and moved with compassion, and all there is left is to love, when the connection is deep and God's tears start falling from your eyes like streams of living water, they might fall over your face and touch your lips. Then you will taste those divine tears and experience the unmistakable flavor of salt.